Hi everyone, this is Julian from AWS. Welcome to episode 7 of my podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified of future episodes. In this episode, I'm talking to my friend Francesco, an experienced data scientist who worked for a number of different companies, including Amazon Kindle. He's also actively blogging about data science. We talk about getting started with machine learning, uh, running your machine learning projects, interacting with business stakeholders, and a whole bunch of different things. So uh, I'm sure we'll enjoy this conversation and you will learn a few things. So let's not wait and let's listen to Francesco. Francesco, thank you very much for taking the time uh, to speak to us today. So let's start with a quick intro. Tell us about how you got started with data science and machine learning. Hello, Julian. Yes. So um, it, it's been like almost by, by, by chance for me in the sense that I, I, I started like in um, in the, at the end of 2013. Uh, and at that time, I was uh, looking into Python mainly. Uh, so I wanted to get started with Python. Uh, and uh, for um, uh, absolutely by, by chance, I, I, I stumbled upon uh, the Andrew MG course uh, on, uh, on, oh, on yeah. Coursera. Uh, and like on the, on the front cover, there was this, this, this robot like uh, and, and you know, everybody like was telling like, the, that there was everybody was was talking about like, this, this new thing about machine learning, uh, which I absolutely uh, knew not about so i said you know let's let's get started um and uh, funnily enough the 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 homeworks were in matlab um so it was not mm -hmm. even in python right. uh, but uh you know like the the uh, the instructor was so was so awesome uh that i just stick to it and it lasted for 12 weeks uh and it was my first introduction to to machine learning and after that i um i thought that the best the best way to get started was was kaggle Mm -hmm. So that's that was my next uh, my next step. Go with with Andrew and G. That's I think that that's the the, the, fir the first stop. And and do the your work in Python. Like don't mm -hmm. don't do that in, in in MATLAB, right? So that's uh that's gonna take you around uh, I would say like 12, 12, 12 weeks, so up to four months probably. Um, as soon as you get to the end of the course, um, I would start uh, with uh, the uh, the elements of statistical learning. Um, mm -hmm. So that's like, you know that's kind of the, the bible of, of machine learning. It's it's a it's 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 a huge it's a huge thing. Uh, like there is also like the 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 the, ver the version for dummies, um, which I think it's uh, the <laughs> for me uh, applications <laughs> of statistical learning uh, yeah. with uh, in R something mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, that's from the same folks. Uh, so I would. Uh, I will stick with there, uh, with that one, um, and then Kaggle. Uh, that's that's for sure. Uh, and uh, you don't necessarily have to compete. Uh, like, uh, of course, like competing is, is is awesome, right? Because you get like a an immediate benchmark of of, of what you're up to, uh, and that is super important, right? Uh, because it, it it like I feel that the, the mistake which I did at the beginning, especially, was to uh, getting my notebook, like a Jupyter notebook, up and running and getting a, a score, right? You get eighty percent, seventy percent, eighty percent accuracy or AUC, um, and you 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 get like in this comfort zone, right? Uh, like uh, feel, feeling absolutely enthusiastic about your results and 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 super happy about about what uh, what you uh, what you achieved but the truth is that you don't know if that is good or not right um so uh, uh the, it is it is super important to 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 talk to people and and compare your results with with uh, with, with others so um, something else uh, uh which I, I i think it's it's uh, it's very often overlooked by practitioners is um is a sequel uh that is that is uh mm -hmm. i i i didn't I, I i very rarely find like this this skill set uh in uh, in um you know blog posts or or whenever we talk about you know machine learning and we um always end up like with very often i would say end up with deep learning and neural networks and all this hype which is incredibly cool and they actually work but the truth is uh that in our, in your day-to-day -day job uh nobody's going to get your data for you Right. Oh, Nobody man. would do that. You should put this right? on a T-shirt. <laughs> yes, totally. That is uh, uh, that is incredibly true. And and you know, I, I as soon as you face it, you realize that um, um, people will tell you, well, of course. I mean, this data is uh, in that database. Um, in you have uh, ten different. I mean, ten. Uh, <laughs> ten is probably like no. I would say one hundred different tables uh, which are undocumented. Uh, uh, so go on. Uh, good luck with that. So uh, you can you can be like the, a machine learning wizard, uh, but without uh, a good performing ETL or a good performing um, SQL skills, you will absolutely go nowhere. So this is a really good transition to my next question, which is 
when you start working on a new project, uh, what are the first few steps you, you take? And is there a general way of addressing a new machine learning project? Or is it a custom thing every time? Um, uh, the, the very first step, um, which is to me the, the hardest part in any machine learning project, is understanding the, the business context. And that was like when I was, in, uh, when I was working for Amazon Kindle, actually. Um, so, um, you know, we were, uh, we were asked like, to, to, to predict whether an ebook would, would sell well. Or, or not, right? Whenever, whenever it was available on, online, like on, on, on the Amazon website. Uh, and then again, like getting, getting back to what, uh, to what I said before, um, what can possibly go wrong, right? It's, 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 uh, it's easy, right? You get an ebook and you want to, you want to understand how much revenues this, this, uh, this guy is gonna make. Absolutely. As soon as it is available. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, the problem is that, um, you know, um, uh, um, for instance, um, is the, the ebook just the, the part of the business we should be focusing on, right? What about the, the, the paper side, right? What about the fact that uh, on, on that book is already available in print, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so is is my is my ebook are my is my ebook going to cannibalize uh, sales from from the paper side, right? That's something which is definitely not not told, right? Uh, it's completely out of scope. But guess what? It is instead a super critical part of your of your problem because if you if you you oversell your ebook, then your publisher is gonna is, is gonna is gonna be unhappy uh, mm. with you because the complete the, the global volume of sales is gonna go down, right? And right. that's something which is not incorporated in your loss function, right? Uh, that that's that's why it is super important to frame your business pro uh, your business problem correctly. If you just perform a regression on sales of the ebook, you would optimize that number yeah be just careful what you wish because that's what you're gonna get yes, right exactly mm -hmm. right you will optimize just that number and and guess what a machine learning a machine learning algorithm is just a mathematical formula it doesn't it doesn't know anything about cannibalization of the people's side right mm -hmm. so uh you have to take care of incorporating that knowledge in your data set or of tweaking your loss function in order to for it to understand that it doesn't have to penalize uh the paper book if present and that knowledge you can only get from business people, right? Exactly. That is knowledge which you can only get from business people, and that is knowledge which uh, nobody will tell you uh, about until you get too far in your project, right? <laughs> and so uh, that is like an absolute killer, right? Because yeah. you get in your in your meeting room like with your stakeholders, and you present you're super proud of your first MVP, uh, and you're getting an accuracy of 90%, uh, and you really want to share that with your stakeholders. And then the very first question after two minutes you have started presenting is, have you considered the paper side? Yeah. And you are there, like feeling like super dumb, uh, because that's up, I, actually you haven't considered mm -hmm. that, right? Um, and that's that you, which basically means that you have to restart your project from scratch. Um, so uh, make sure you talk to the business people. Uh, understand why you're doing what you're doing. Um, that is uh, of paramount importance for any machine learning project yeah, okay, a machine yeah. learning problem is a machine learning solution sorry um is something which solves a business problem mm. right there is no no machine learning solution is out there uh just because it's fun right uh, machine learning solutions solve business problems uh and business problems are complicated uh and so what you need to do is you need to understand what is going on uh, in your solution uh, to make sure that you are solving the right problem and you are solving it, solving it at the best of your possibilities. Uh, and also something something else which I learned the hard way uh, is um, product managers or the business people getting back to you uh, one random day uh, and <laughs> telling you, hey, I don't understand why uh, X, Y, Z turned into uh, A yeah. right, instead of B. Uh, and it's it. You would look really dumb, like if you told them. Absolutely. I mean, how yeah. am I supposed to know whether yeah. a random forest is performing what is performing? But that is not true. Like, so it's not just. Yeah, it's not just explaining the model. It's explaining the model to business stakeholders. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. Which is a different thing, you know, because if you go, if you need to go to the your C level um, people. You can't just print out, you know, your XJ Boost trees and say, "Oh, you see, this is how it works, and this is why it decided <laughs> yes. this and that." And neural networks are even worse. 
you know, yeah. show up with your gradients and whatever, and they'll kick you out of the room. So that's the yeah. next level, making it uh, understandable to non-technical people and justifying that, yes, it's working that way and, uh, and, and it's correct. Yeah. Totally, and, and you know, I, uh, I tell you what, it's it's a, uh, it's incredible the amount of insights uh, which you can get out of those exercises. Uh, it, it, it like it was an, an eye opener for me, so I highly recommend to do that for for you know everyone. As soon as you get as soon as you get a model in place and it's performing okay, try to understand what is the relationship between your features and your dependent variable, right? Are you able to answer? questions like what is what happens to the to the price of a house when the the volume of the house increases like is this is this linearly correlated uh does it does it go down up does it depend on other variables hopefully it does right what is what is this kind of, of relationship um it is super important and and it will help you as a machine learning practitioner to understand deeply understand what the problem is and to get back to the business with suggestions why is your model performing the way it is performing? Uh, why got, why uh, did my uh, loan um, request uh, get rejected? Oh yes. Right. Uh, why is that book performing better than this other book? Right. So interpretable AI, like interpretable machine learning, I think it's it's uh, it's another huge thing uh, which um, the, the, the community has, has made a lot of progress on uh, that's uh, that's that's clear uh, but it's also something which is very fr frequently overlooked especially from um, machine learning engineers uh, who are really focusing on on making sure that that your model is is, is resilient and it's working and it's fine and you got 90 percent accuracy and mm. it's good uh, but it's not right it's not because you really want to understand what is what is going on right and then us as humans or like to make sure that we trust uh those those models we need to understand right. them as machine learning practitioners we are not simply solving a business problem but we are also getting back to the business with advices on how to make things better right uh so and and you can you can get there only if you really deeply understand uh what your what your model is doing um and uh, and which kind of uh, which kind of insights you're getting out of now, it. that's a very interesting point uh, i think it's the first time i've uh, have heard it mentioned the fact that modeling the problem actually teaches you stuff you know about about the data itself and the business problem itself so closing you know, not just predicting it's not just one way right here's data give me the answer is here's data build the model give me answers and understand the hidden relationships in the data so that maybe we can you know come up with business decisions right that's a re totally, really good totally. point yeah I think you know. I think that that, that I think that that is uh, that is what is probably I'm most excited about, like in this in this uh, era, like of, of machine learning. The fact that we are democratizing machine learning, right? Uh, it is super important. It is super important because it should be used by business analysts as well, right? Mm -hmm. So people who are well, data analysts, like people who are not necessarily in touch with uh, al algorithmic way of solving problems. Uh, but if if your if your PM like is asking you, uh, hey, um, you know, what is again, Again, what is what is the relationship between the the price of the house and and uh, its surface mm -hmm. right if you answer that question plotting um, classic like univariate relationship right so house versus versus surface you're doing it all wrong right because what you're doing is that you're implying that there are no relationship right. with all other features right what you should uh, answer instead is that is the relationship between house price and surface of the house all other things being equal yeah it's just and a projection answer... right it's just a projection exactly Exactly. Yeah. And you can answer that only if you have a model, right? Mm. So it would be, I think, I really hope it gets into the routine of a day-to-day -day routine of, of uh, everybody, right? Uh, like even like, uh, people who are not necessarily in touch with, with, with machine learning to say, hey, you know what, let me let me fit like an XG boost re real quick, right? You know, let me do that. And then, you know, let me plot a partial dependency plot, right? Or let me like um, find like shapely values over here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, try to understand what is what is going on, right? Um, uh, so I think this is this is super exciting. I think it's even more exciting than the all the 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 the, the algorithmic development yeah. uh, and uh, like getting like state of the art results. That is really cool and it's important. But it's even more important to me to really let this knowledge sink uh, across 
everybody. Uh, so that's why education is important at all levels. Uh, and get started, just just do it. Just make sure that you know what is going on uh, and that you can use those models uh, as uh, as much as you can because they are extremely powerful. So, yeah. Any any last thoughts? Any anything? Uh, you know, any question? I forgot to ask. <laughs> anything you want to say? Well, <laughs> I, 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 there is definitely something I, I want to say, uh, and there's something I, 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 I cannot stress enough. Uh, whenever I get in touch with new people, uh, who want to know um, what they can do um, in this, uh, you know, in this domain, which is extremely overwhelming. Uh, and uh, what do I need? Do I need to get a PhD in statistics? Do I need to get a PhD in computer science? Uh, like, I, I don't know what to do. Uh, mm. I have like, uh, I have. I have bought like 10 different volumes um, talking about all, all, all sorts of different things. Where do I need to start? And to me, if I have to summarize everything, is uh, create a blog of your own. It is incredibly important. Like I, it, it's gonna be a huge satisfaction. So start from what you love. Uh, this is probably this is probably uh, uh, rather obvious, uh, but I, I don't think it is because because new machine learning practitioners tend to read online about what uh, the, um, don't know, um, the, the business wants or, 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 or what is important to know because it will get you get a job. Um, this is, of course, it's, it's relevant and, and you should follow like, you know, what people around you um, are, 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 are saying about, about this, uh, this, this domain. But if you really want to get started, start from, from what you like, right? You want, you're interested in, in, in computer vision, just train a, a cat versus dog classifier and <laughs> write a blog about it. Yeah, just do I, it. I it's, it's 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 incredible. Uh, it's an incredible experience, and most importantly, you can talk about it, right? Uh, you can you can you can talk about a solution which you have implemented from zero to the very end, up to an AWS-based web, web application, right? How many people can can uh, can tell this kind of story? There are not that many, right? Because you know there's there's a lot of people focusing on learning every every single possible uh, statistical method in in the world before writing a line of code. Just do it the other way around, right? Uh, so start coding now. Uh, that's uh, that's the way to go, according to me. Well, that's a great conclusion. So we'll leave it at that. And uh, I want to thank you very much for taking the time and sharing the knowledge. Uh, this is this is really uh, this is really invaluable. Thank you very very much, and I hope thank to see you, you soon. Thank you, thank you, Julian. Thank you. Thank you. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you soon with more conversations and more content. Until then, keep rocking. Yeah.